I think most people at the moment have heard of self-driving cars. You know, we're very familiar, we see demonstrations of those all the time. What people don't think about is you don't need the wheels, you don't need the engine, you don't even need the artificial intelligence driving it or the battery. If you can get rid of all of those, you reduce the cost by a factor of 100. So I'm looking at a system now which gives you all of the advantages of self-driving cars but they're driverless cars, they don't have any driver at all, that is driven by a mat on the road surface uh, and just propelled by magnetic fields which are controlled by the, the mats on the road surface. So that produces a fundamentally cheaper and better way of, of, of doing the same thing that we already expect to get from self-driving cars. You take the idea of self-driving cars and you just re-engineering it and you, you reduce the costs by a factor of 100 without throwing away any of the advantages. That seems to me to be a pretty good thing. Uh, so if we look at self-driving cars today, typically people like Google say that a self-driving car will cost 30,000 euros or $30,000, the same sort of thing. Uh, you could make a fiberglass pod with a couple of metal strips on the bottom and a comfy seat. You could make that for 300 euros or $300. So it's 100 times cheaper than what the industry is currently planning to make. We can't make it quite yet, but we already know the materials will be available to do that in five to 10 years time and the costs will fall over the next five or 10 years. So within 20 years, that will probably dominate how we do these uh, driverless cars. Now the negative of that is you don't need the car industry. Anybody can make a fiberglass pod. It requires some sophisticated skills to make a self-driving car. So those companies that are expecting to keep in the future by making self-driving cars, they might not have any significant role in the far future. They could be wiped out. Technology is a very predictable field. I look at technology rather than social trends, for example, because social trends are difficult to predict. But technology, is, is it follows a very fixed path. You know, there's an engineering a breakthrough which is based on a scientific breakthrough. Uh, that core science takes about 25 to 30 years to become real products on our, on our shelves and affect our life. So you can follow that through and you can make really good estimates as to the sort of things you could build. And um, most of those are really stupid ideas which no one's ever going to make because there's no business case. So you can throw away the rubbish and what you're left with are those things that are possible where you can imagine real people buying them. We used to call things like that disruptive technology where you're disrupting an industry. I don't really see it that way. I see it as a stimulative technology. If you can make a distribution system a hundred times cheaper than today's. It stimulates all sorts of new businesses. You know, some person at home is really good at making cakes or chutney or something. Uh, it's too expensive for them to distribute it today, so they haven't got a business. If you make it that cheap, that you know, the car picks it up, it delivers it to somebody else, it doesn't cost anything. Uh, suddenly we, we see a resurgence of home crafts, we see cottage industries springing up, all sorts of new businesses can exist that can't exist today. I call that stimulative technology. It stimulates entire new industries. It doesn't just disrupt some industry that already exists. It's far more powerful.